Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have made changes to my Scramjet Aerospike. In particular, I have changed the cockpit and then added a pass-through section uh, to this portion right here in front of the new hydrogen tank that I added right about there. And there's a lot of space in the body, actually. Uh, four can seat, uh, be seated across this. Uh, it's a very wide thing. And we'll see that once we get outside, hopefully. But I'm checking out whether everything works. So what's going to happen is this is a combination of the normal IVA and then the pass-through system. And unfortunately, the highlighting doesn't make this look good. Oh, there's a gap there. See, well, this is the sort of thing that I'm going to have to fix after taking a look at it. I didn't notice there was a gap there. Uh, but basically, there's a hatch here, an invisible hatch that they can pop. Oh, it would be about there-ish. Uh, that they'll pop out through, hopefully, and the ladder, you know. And so it'll be like a normal IVA. Uh, there's nothing in front here because um, it's an IVA. Uh, but yeah, then they can pop out and we could put other supplies here and then they can float up through the fuel tank. Oh, there's a uh, one. See? Yeah, sometimes I miss those. So there's a little polygon there that's probably got the normal flip the wrong way. And so they can go through and I'll need an especially low profile docking port for this. <laughs> so I probably need to reshape this just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we've got sort of purple padding right now, and then we'll have a docking port, and then they can flow through to a pass-through uh, system thing. Or we could use the normal IVA and normal transfer mode, so both modes will work when we dock. Uh, so it can dock to anything instead of just a pass-through station. Uh, and we can just transfer crew the normal way because we've got the normal IVA as well. So the question is whether this actually works. And there's other complications. We have to retest uh, launch and re-entry because in order to make the pass-through system work, I have to add colliders around it. Previously, when I tested this, there was just one collider here in front. Now I've had to shorten that collider to cover the IVA area. And then there's a separate set of colliders around the pass-through area that are around on, along the wall of the body. And that might change the dynamics a bit depending on how far reads that. Oh, I wanted to test out the extra scramjet mode. We've never used mode 2 on the scramjet, which dumps even more fuel into the scramjet in the hope of getting us past Mach 10. That may still be more efficient than the, the rocket mode. Oh... Yeah, okay, let's let's park for a sec here. Okay, IVA view. Okay, so this is the IVA view right now. The panel is a little bit far in front, and the Kerbals are sort of, sort of floating above the seat because the seats are sized for humans, and everything is sized for humans, so there's a lot of extra. We might need swizzle sticks to reach the panel like this, but we've got the raster prop monitor stuff, and we can see out the windows properly now. So those are the legit windows. Uh, though the this is sort of floating in midair, that needs to be moved over to like there-ish would be good, I guess. We have another nap ball here anyway. Uh, that's not an ideal location, but we have the panel with the rest prop monitor stuff too. So this is how this IVA is looking, and we've got the floor. We've got some switches there, and we've got the other kerbals off to the side. And yeah, there's plenty of room in the cabin, as you can see, especially for Kerbals, but even for humans, it should be all right. And they have room to stretch their legs. All right, but now we need to figure out... Oh, it's on the hind... Come on. I mean, I guess that's good for pitching up eventually, but... Okay, but we're going to have Enfin EVA for us. Okay, and Enfin should EVA into the pass-through area. And so, some flashiness here, that's not good. Uh, but we have those gaps there, but... All right, Enfin, let's go of the ladder, which is actually reversed, and can walk around here. That's how this looks right now. Can Enfin actually walk up that ramp? Okay, so that's good. Grab. Uh, it doesn't seem to be able to get back in though. Um, briefly it says board, 
uh, but very briefly, but it doesn't seem to be able to climb the ladder properly, so that's a little bit of a problem. Maybe I should just turn their ladder, ladder around and have them face the cockpit instead of facing outward. All right, so more or less that's working out. Let's uh, get atmospheric cop pod on. Throttle isn't working today, fine. And ignition. So that part mostly checks out. Mostly checks out. We are underfueled as far as liquid oxygen is concerned compared to the capabilities of this to carry liquid oxygen, just like in the previous videos. Yeah, pre previous to this, the scramjet aerospike used a uh, cockpit from the Shinkansen system, but that cockpit was shaped differently and of course the windows were in place right, so that's why we had to do a new one here. A lot of my space planes actually use the same cockpit and deliberately have the front end shaped so that they can use that cockpit with the same windows. Okay, we are past Mach 1 without even pitching down. Well, it says large angle of attack, so I'll moderate that. So obviously, KSP-1 is going to continue. There are things I can do here that obviously we cannot do in KSP-2 yet. And uh, frankly, uh, it is always a relief to come back to my old stomping grounds with all the familiar things and well-practiced patterns. It's makes things a lot easier to do things compared to anything else, of course. Okay, getting ready to switch modes on the jet engines to ramjet. And ramjet. Looking good so far, it doesn't look like the aerodynamics have changed that much, or at all. Looking for Mach 5 now. Get the scramjet information up. Really, I just want the thrust to make sure we don't overheat it. I feel like this hasn't been going as efficiently as the previous time. Probably not doing this in the ideal way this time. Just taking a little bit of time, but uh, I should review the video on that to see whether it really should be creeping up like this or whether it should be increasing speed faster. But we'll still get to Mach 5 first. Okay, activating the scramjet. And pitching up a bit. And. Throttling down, throttling down. Oh, fudge. It exploded. Bright side, um, this doesn't actually stop flying when the scramjet explodes. <laughs> uh, we, could, we could probably come back down safely if we had, like, landing gear. Okay, I, d I didn't manage that properly. Let me try that again. Okay. And ignition. All right, the throttle. The throttle doesn't work. That's the problem. I tried to use the throttle, but the throttle isn't working right now. Ah, uh, just instinct reaching for the throttle. This is the thing with Unity games. They uh, they like exclusive control over throttle. So if you play a different one, whether it's a different install of KSP or a different Unity game. It'll, like, say it's the only one that gets to use the throttle. It's weird. Or, yeah, it seems to be only a problem with the throttle, not the joystick. Okay, ramjet activation. And setting up Smart ASS. Okay, let me just pre-thrust limit the scramjet a bit. 
opening scramjet intake and activating scramjet. Okay, now I'll just use the main throttle for it now. Okay, jet engines off. Oh, oh, uh, it's overheating. Well, I'm gonna try the other scramjet mode, but I don't know if it's gonna be good or not. We will see. Okay, we are past Mach 9, and we're still producing 2,000 kilonewtons, but I'm going to attempt scramjet mode Mach, uh, scramjet mode 2. That doesn't seem good. Yeah, uh, it wasn't producing more thrust for some reason. But all the, well, once I change mode, all the sound goes for some reason too. Yeah, it produces less thrust for some reason, I don't know. Maybe we're already in the good mode. Okay, it is still on, it's just not making any sound for some reason. At 400,000 liquid hydrogen, we'll start up the rocket engines, the air spikes. Uh, but we do have to go up instead of down here. Okay, ignition and pitch up to 30 degrees. A pitching down. Again, sorta of want this to get lift here too. Don't know if that's a good strategy. Intake closed. Engine off. So yeah, mode two on the scramjet did not seem to work out for us. I'll have to look into that. Okay, shutting down for now, and we'll coast. Okay, just one arrow spike. Okay, we have about 200 meters per second left. It's still a crew vehicle that needs to be able to rendezvous with the station though, so it's not ideal at the moment. I'll wait until we're at app lapses again before doing anything else, but what I'm going to do is we are going to open hatch and I'm gonna see if the pass-throughness works out. Is there a this is a weird bulge here that there isn't supposed to be. How did that happen? Didn't even notice that before. Oh no, it's a, I don't know. Huh. I mean, from this angle, it's actually indented. Huh. We got a dent somehow, folks. I don't know how that happened. Okay. All right. Tiles don't look bad up close. They are supposed to be metallic tiles based on Venture Star. Okay, out we go. This is the part I like about the pass-through system. sort of popping out and then you're outside with all the earth view and everything and get a close look at our spacecraft some bits of the tiling aren't perfect because of the UV unwrapping on the texture I have a very good version of KSP, let's face it. I don't know about this, all these KSPs, but I've got a good version of it, one way or another. Okay, we've got an invisible hatch to try and find. Uh, 
Gotta watch out for that nitrogen though. It uh, gets consumed a lot more than the EVA propellant in previous versions. Okay, board. It doesn't slide down here because it's space. Okay, well that part works. Well, time to do the tough part again. Mainly I'm just seeing that the collider change hasn't changed our dynamics coming down. We can't trust KOS, we can't, uh, we can just trust smart ASS to hold the pitch, I think. And we're gonna try and circularize this a little bit first. Um, let's get the fuel cell on so that we can line up properly. And we'll wait a full day. I don't know if we're gonna have too much boil off though. We'll see. Okay, well it's not a perfectly circular orbit, but it's probably good enough for predictability to be a thing. So we are going to wait a day so that we're lined up with Cape Canaveral again. Okay, we are going to do the deorbit burn. I'm gonna use a single aerospike for it. Instead of using the RCS thrusters as I've done before. But we'll finish it with the RCS thrusters. I don't know if this Delta V is gonna be all usable because we're still gonna have residuals, unusable fuel, 0.8% it looks like. Which is not bad actually. Oh, that's just the scramjet part though. The aerospike says 0.97%. I've had some inconsistent results with re-entry before. And the dynamics of this may be different, we'll see. Okay, uh, 120 degrees, I'll deorbit it. And starting. And stopping. Okay, I will take 20 kilometers. We could do zero, but we started the re-entry burn earlier and finished it quicker than before, so I'm hoping this will be good. We could carry less water initially because the fuel cell generates the water. No, it is sunrise right there. Okay, so good enough timing. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers and doing fine so far. Our current location is here, not to be confused with there. That's an old scram spike. That is not with the new cabin and interior. This is the new scram spike. And we are a fair ways from Mexico yet, and in line with Cape Canaveral, right there. Okay, we're going up a bit while burning off some speed. And we are currently looking like that, so it's looking like we're not going to make it to Cape Canaveral right now, but we'll see, you know, lift. Right now we're getting lift. So, yep. Currently at 79 kilometers altitude and going up 6,800 meters per second. But we are getting a fair amount of drag. Okay, we are crossing over Mexico now. This is Baja, California. And the Gulf of California. Still haven't stretched our orbit much. So maybe I... Retroburned too early, which is, I mean, probably an overcorrection for when I did it too late in the previous attempts. We will see. We do theoretically have some jet engine fuel. You can see the liquid oxygen there, but I don't know how much of it is usable. Okay, we are at 70 kilometers over Mexico, and our vertical speed is tending towards zero again. Just mid-Mexico here, our path is a little bit longer now. Don't know if it's going to get long enough. We're decelerating pretty quickly. Tampico is there, that's my other launch site. And then, so we've got the Tampico launch site, we've got the Bahamas, we've got the Space Center there, and of course Edwards is up there. And in theory, Boca Chica should be here, but normally we can just shift the KSC to Boca Chica so it doesn't have a se separate icon. Tampico, Edwards, and the Bahamas do not have that option, so we have custom things going on there. <laughs> We're getting further along. It's not going to end up 
too far, I guess. Okay, we are in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, 60 kilometers altitude, 3,200 meters per second and slowing down. I mean, it's tantalizing. It's not too far off. We're about 9 degrees of lat longitude away now. Yeah, I'm going to pitch down further. In the hope that we maintain some speed here. But the deceleration is happening. We can see Florida over there. Well, Tampa Bay seems to be in reach. Okay, opening intakes. Now we know that produces drag. And activating the engines, the jet engines. But we should probably go down more. And atmospheric autopilot time. Uh, well, we have a limited amount of time. Can we make it across Florida? That is the question. Well, at least we won't be in the water. Cape Canaveral is barely visible there, so there's a chance. I'm gonna dump the oxygen. That's one thing you can dump without anybody getting mad. Well, cruising right along at Mach 2.28 for a little while. <laughs> for a very little while. If that's right. Not very long at all. Okay, switching off everything. The intake should be closed. Yeah. Okay, we have no more power. And it's still decelerating very quickly. Uh, let me see. Big 8 intake is closed. Alright. I don't think we're going to make it over there. It's just losing speed too quickly. Just a few degrees further on our retro burn instead of 120 degrees east maybe 124 would do the trick it's always tough to stay above Mach 1 though fizz warping atmospheric autopilot is very good with fizz warp well we'd have a better chance going for the NOR runway than trying to turn into the shuttle landing facility Come on, little scram spike. Get over there. It's tight. Okay, changing to locked view in hopes. There is theoretically a cockpit view, but it's really hard to land with it. I'll tell you that, because the windows are such that they, they're not good at that part. They're more for sightseeing. I don't know. The shuttle landing facility does give us more room. So there is that. Okay, we are trying for the shuttle landing facility, it looks like. Gear down. Preparing to use the intake as an air brake. Okay, uh, amazingly enough, we're lined up. Intake open. Intake closed. <laughs> very very effective and 
touchdown, intake open. <laughs> Put all down. I mean, okay. Keep the nose gear on the ground. Uh, oh, 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 oh! It's bouncing. It's bouncing. It's tipping. It's tipping. It's tipping. It's tipping. It's tipping. Close that. Ah! Why does it have to go wrong now? Handbrake turn. Handbrake turn. Oh! It's got to take the body flat. It took the whole arrow spike. I mean, uh, the, not the arrow spike, the scramjet, and everything died. Oh, well, here's a glitch. <laughs> um, I, it's because, the first of all, the collider of this uh, shuttle landing facility actually is like that. But that's weird. I would expect the vertical stabilizers to topple over eventually. There's a surface velocity of 10.6. Yes, KSP-1 has totally no glitches. <laughs> oh god, why can't it just go right? I was deliberately not using the brakes so that we wouldn't like skid off to the side, but we skidded off to the side anyway. We were slow and everything, uh, but success mostly. Why can't it just work properly? Anyway, with that catastrophic failure as it says, I will end it here. And I will say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.